Welcome to our Christmas Eve adventure service. Yeah, Catherine's excited about this. <laughs> you, yes, absolutely. There we go. When I was, when I was little, this, this was the way I played Indiana Jones. Yeah. This is not one of my. What? Exactly, exactly. There was that one time. Maybe more than once. But, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. There was there was this sound a lot. Oh man, I can't. Do it. There we go. That was the thr that sends shivers down the spine. Yes. Even doing it myself. Anyway, when I was a little boy, that was the adventure. That was always the fun. I couldn't be tame. But um, getting to dress up as Indiana Jones and going on these pretend adventures and imagining all of this fun stuff. And uh, when I became, not when I became, when I was 15, we moved to Indiana, and it hit me, I had to be months later, because things always take forever to sink into my thick skull. But it hit me one morning, in the, in, and I started just laughing uncontrollably in the bathroom, and Dad was, was across the hall and said, are you okay in there? And I said, yes, I'm Indiana Jones. <laughs> I lived in Indiana, and of course I was joking. So this was always this was the fun thing, but it was always about adventure, and it was always about having a great time like that. And I wanted to do that tonight because this this season, uh, from the first Sunday in December all the way up till Christmas, is known as Advent, and it is the same it is the same root as where we get adventure. It, it's a journey. It's a process. It's something that we go through. We as a church didn't, didn't get on the ball too quick uh, on doing that this year, so I thought, let's just do it all in one night. So we're going to take our adventure, we're going to take our journey, and we're going to do it all in one night. And we're going to take that journey, and, and as Christmas goes, there's journeys everywhere for Christmas. It, it was Joseph and Mary taking the trip from Bethlehem uh, no, to Bethlehem, so that they could do the census. It was the Magi following the star from the east to find the king that was to come. It was the angels coming down from heaven all over the place uh, to give visions and dreams. It was the shepherds going out of the fields into the cities, finding the manger, so that they could worship this newborn king. These are all the journeys that we went on. And with each step of the way that we go here tonight, um, we're going to light a candle, we'll talk about it a little bit, and then we'll sing a song. So let's start our adventure to Christmas with O Come All Ye Faithful, and it's hymn number 145. I love my words on my sheet of paper. <laughs> I've got three. That's important. Yeah. 27, I believe, is what I have. You guys can stand up or yeah. sit down, whatever, whatever you want to do, whatever you feel comfortable with. Okay. Let's stand. Let's okay. stand. Make a choice. Everybody stand up. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come, ye, oh, come, ye to bed. Come and behold him, born the King of angels. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. In Christ the Lord. Choirs of angels sing in exultation. Sing, all ye bright hosts of heaven above. Glory to God, all glory in the highest. Oh, come, let us adore. 
the times of the slavery in Egypt. This brings us into the exile, which is where a lot of scholars look at the concept of the Messiah is coming from, is that here we are in our times of trouble, here a nation is in captivity and far away from their homeland, and they need somebody to come and to save them. And we find ourselves like that all over again once Christmas season starts up. We find ourselves so far away from New Year's and all those resolutions that we made to be better people and, and so much further into, as I share in my testimony usually, those dark places in my life that I tend, that I tend to find my way back into whether I want to or not. And here we start our adventure, we start our journey seeking hope. And, and the song that we wanted to go along with this is, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And this is one of my favorite songs because I've always got that image of the exile happening. I've always got the image of somebody who is just sitting in utter despair, crying out to God and seeking God's favor and having all of this hope and this knowledge that God will come. That God is on his way to us, just as we are on his, our way to him. And that in all of this, it's seeking God in spite of these times of trouble. We're going to have all these times of trouble. But having this hope and seeking this hope, looking for these better things from God, is, is what keeps us coming back. It's what the journey is all about. So may we continue to cry out for God's mercy, grace, and salvation in the midst of our times of trouble. Uh, we're going to sing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. It's hymn number 123. <coughs> and what I have on my paper is different than the book. We'll go by what's in the book. We're going to do all four because this is great. Mm -hmm. I've got five on my paper, and only two of them go in there. Uh, I'm going to let you guys lead the singing because... Come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, and in lonely exile here, until the Son of God Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, 
shall come to thee, O Israel. Who come thou day spring, come and cheer our spirits by thine advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night. And death's dark shadows would to fly. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come thou wisdom from on high, and order all things far and nigh. To us the path of knowledge show, and cause us in the ways to go. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Desire of nations thine, all peoples in one heart and mind. Bid in thee strife and sorrow cease. Fill all the world with heaven's peace. Rejoice, rejoice, Amen. So the second week of Advent, typically, we want to light the second candle here. And this candle is all about peace. And peace is a concept that, especially in Jewish culture, is a fascinating one. Peace comes from shalom. And shalom isn't simply peace that is, let's not fight. Shalom is this concept of harmony. It's this concept of completeness. It's not simply about the, the absence of war or fighting or conflict. It is about that, but it's this wholeness. It's this all is right in the world. Everything is going to be okay. And that's something we need and have needed all throughout human history. That's something that we need today as, as we have all of this conflict around us. And it's something that we need in each and every one of our own lives. This shalom, this peace that, uh, that is this concept for them is not simply peace among men. It's peace with God. It's we've been having these struggles. Jacob literally wrestled with God. And, and once they were done, God blessed him and said, you have struggled with men, and you have struggled with me, and now you, you will be Israel. And, and that's what that was all about, is that these struggles have been happening, and they'll continue to happen. But the goal here is peace. And that's what the angels brought to the shepherds that night. They brought and they said, peace on earth and goodwill to men. It's peace with God. It's peace within ourselves. As we talk about with the candle of hope, there are all those times of trouble, there are all those stresses that are happening, especially around the holidays. And finding that peace in the midst of all those storms in our lives is a difficult thing. But constantly seeking God is, again, part of this journey. Constantly seeking that peace, that wholeness, is part of this journey. And it's also peace with one another. I've seen a lot of people really upset this time of year. 
And I'm sure that it's just the process of the stresses of the holiday, like we talked about, coming out. But th there just seems to be more anger in general. And finding a way to bring peace into that is something that we are called to do. It's something that the angels brought that message down. It's something that Jesus continued to preach about while he was here on this earth and grew from the baby to the Savior. Peace on earth and goodwill to men. In a world full of conflict, we are called to bring shalom. The song we're going to sing with this, we're going to have piano this time. And then we're switching it up a little bit because nobody's Nehemiah's original kid. <laughs> Including myself. <laughs> uh, I heard the bells on Christmas Day. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna sing <laughs> We're gonna sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing, because after all it was those angels that were coming and singing. It's number one thirty three. And there's three verses, so we'll just sing all three. It's all about rejoicing. 
It's all about we need to have this gravity. We need to have this weight. We need to talk about the solemn things. <coughs> we need to pray from that sometimes. We need to have some lightness and some fun. And this, this is a happy, joyful season, isn't it? This is the time that we can let loose and celebrate, and this is what all the psalms are about. Excuse me. <clears throat> so in the midst of all of this seriousness, in the midst of all of this wave, we get this chance to break away from it and to rejoice. So we are going to sing Joy to the World, number 125. And as you sing it, please cry out, make a loud noise, and remember the king is Joy to the world, the Lord is down. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare to improve. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men and their songs employ. Blood fields and floods, crops, hills and plains. Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sins and sorrows. Thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow. Far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, as far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders, wonders of his love. So we've sought out hope in the midst of trouble. We've looked for peace while we are upset. And now we are joyful and excited about all of this happening. And the last candle is love. And that's what this is all about, isn't it? Love has come. This brings us back to that concept of the Messiah. The, the, the Messiah was born out of this struggling and this troubled time. And God has sought after us all of this time. And he wants to bring this Messiah. He wants to send his son down because he so loves the world. John 3, 16. John talks about love just all over the place in his gospel. And the one that I wanted to share especially, of course I took my is chapter 15, verse 9. Jesus is sitting with his disciples, and it's the, in the midst of all of these teachings of, of who he is. And this isn't the first time that he said love, but this is where it all culminates. He says, I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you these things that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. There is no greater love than, than to lay down one's life for one's friend. This is what it's all about. It's all about how much God loves us. 
He loves us so much that he's going to send his son down here into this dark world. He's going to send this perfect being into this imperfect world. He's going to send this pure thing into this dirty, dirty world. And he's going to have us lay him down in an animal's food dish. And he's going to have these shepherds out in the middle of the field that stink and smell like, like sheep come in and worship him first and foremost above all the rest. In the midst of all of this stuff, in the midst of all of our own personal junk, love has come to bring us into the saving relationship so that we can know this Messiah, so that our journey through Christmas can become a journey with Christ. The baby has come, and once he becomes a man, we will follow him and we will continue to seek after him. What we're going to sing with this one is Away in a Manger. It's number 157. <clears throat> I'm not going to be able to transcode this. We're going to do it in G just because that's what I have written. I apologize in advance for being high. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. The cattle are blowing, the baby awakes. But little Lord Jesus, no crying. I love the Lord Jesus, go down from the and stay by my cradle till morning in the night. Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay close by me forever. candles are lit. Our journey is done, right? Not right. Because there's a giant white candle in the middle. And this candle has meaning as, meaning as well. Because this candle is at the center of everything. This candle is what everything else is all about. This candle answers that hope that we have. This candle brings that peace into the world. It gives us reason to be joyful and to rejoice and to celebrate and most of all, it is the love that has come into the world. This candle, Rachel, can you tell me which candle this is? It's the Christ candle. This candle is the Christ candle. This candle brings us right back to the sermon I preached a week and a half ago now, I guess, of John's vision of Christmas. It brings us right back into John, which is where I was talking about. That the way John sees Christmas is all about light and it's all about life in the beginning the word already existed the word was with god and the word was god he existed in the beginning with god he created everything through him and nothing was created except through him the word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought light to everyone the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. That's what Christmas is all about for John. It's all about this dark world and this light coming into it in the midst of all of it. 
Just like the love coming down in where there is no love. Just like in Genesis, where the creation happens, where there is nothing and there's darkness and there's void. And God says, let there be light in this world. Just like Revelation, where Christ is the light of heaven. Light is everywhere. And it starts right here with Christmas. It starts right here with Christ coming into the world. But it doesn't end there. I had everybody get up to one, and I forgot to grab the thing. I don't know, still somebody. It doesn't end there. Okay, Abby, while you're there, can you turn off the light? Not the stage one, but the one next to it. Sorry. There, there we go. It doesn't stop there. The light doesn't stay here, and we stay all the way back in our darkness. It's dark. Because Jesus says that we are the light of the world, and that this light isn't supposed to just stay with us, but we are supposed to be a city on a hill so that we can continue to spread that light. And we'll do this last one a cappella, so don't mind if it doesn't burn as we go. I appreciate that. Let's not try. As this light spreads out, we're going to sing a holy night. And I don't have it in front of me. It's 148. It's 148. We're going to do verses 1 and 3. There we go. We're going to skip verse 2. And everybody, hopefully, you can see your your hymnals well enough. Yeah, I'll put it. This is the one forty eight. One forty eight. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night. Of our dear Savior, Thank you. 
Father, we thank you for this night. We thank you for this Christmas Eve. We thank you for this season. That we can come and we can celebrate your coming to earth. You're sending your son here to earth. So we can celebrate Christ in our lives. Father, I pray for joy and happiness tomorrow as we have the fun with the families, as we open the presents as we do all of those things that we like to do at this time of year. But I pray that you remain in us and you remain with us throughout all of it, and that we're able to see you shining brightly in the midst of everything that's all around us. It's in your name we pray. 